This photo of Kylian Mbappe with Cristiano Ronaldo is not from their first meeting. CR7 turned down Kylian Mbappe when he was 11 years old. This happened at Stade Velodrome after an Olympique de Marseille versus Real Madrid match in the Champions League in 2009. So you might ask, what was it Mbappe, a Parisian, doing at the Velodrome? The story is crazy. For his 11th birthday, Kylian's parents decided to take him to see his idol, Cristiano Ronaldo, in person. So they headed to Marseille, which was in Real Madrid's group in the Champions League. At the end of the match, young Kylian wanted to meet his idol, but back then, he was just a nobody. Why would he have the right to see him and not another kid? Mbappe started to cry, seeing his dream of meeting his idol slip away, and then Kylian's good luck struck for the first time in his life. The family ran into the late Pop Diouf, then president of OM, and former player Jean-Charles de Bono, who was a consultant for OMTV at the time. Coming out of an elevator, probably heading from the presidential stands to the locker rooms, they saw Killian in tears. They offered to take him to the mixed zone to see CR7 up close, provided he stayed calm and didn't make a fuss. And I'm not talking about the waves over the golf courses that are on his head right now. Mbappe eventually got an autograph and a photo with his idol, but he didn't stop there. He even asked for his shoes. Oh, CR7. Give me your shoes, hurry. Cristiano refused with a smile. Kid, be nice, don't push it. Wait, because the story doesn't end there. The Mbappe family remembered this story and invited Jean-Charles de Bono, who helped him meet CR7 for the first time. This was for the France-Portugal match as a nod to the past. Jean-Charles de Bono initially thought it was a prank, but not at all. He'll be in Germany tomorrow for France-Portugal. It's an incredible gesture. At first, I thought it was a joke. It's completely crazy that he remembered that and did research to find me. On a human level, I find it extraordinary. I didn't remember this story at all. It really shows that beyond his immense talent as a footballer, he also has a big heart. What would be amazing is if the three of them took a photo at the end of the match and it would come full circle. By the way, Mbappe is going to copy CR7 to the end. Real Madrid is preparing an incredible presentation for him at the Santiago Bernabeu. It might be even crazier than Ronaldo's in 2009. At least that's what the Spanish club is planning, working on the show's details. Because let's be clear, Florentino Perez wants an American-style show. As unveiled a brochure for the presentation, it looks like Real is preparing a festival. A large platform will be set up on the Santiago Bernabeu field. Mbappe will make a grand entrance with pyrotechnics along the walkway, creating huge flames. Afterwards, I said, a walkway, but it will be a bridge. According to AS, the club will install a huge elevated walkway across the field. Fireworks will be set off and a band will play live. They're going to play La Marseillaise on electric guitar. We won't understand anything, as mentions a show like Taylor Swift's. Once his little walk of fame is over, he'll be welcomed by President Florentino Perez and club legend Piri. Some rumors even suggest Zidane will be there for the event. Mbappe will then give a proper speech, probably in Spanish. Since he was a kid, he's been learning Spanish to be ready to play for Real Madrid without the language barrier. See you on Tuesday, July 16th at 7 p.m. in Madrid. I'll be there. Not at all. Anyway, before that, there's a quarterfinal match between Germany and Spain on Friday at 6 p.m. and someone has planted some bad karma for Spain. Watch out for the harvest, Joselu. He did a Zidane 2006. He said about his former Real Madrid teammate, I love Tony, but I think Friday will be his last match. Hop, hop, hop. I remember when I was a kid, the Spanish media said, we're going to send Zidane into retirement. Result, Zizou almost single-handedly eliminated the Spanish team. Arda Guler would like to send the Dutch players on vacation. And if he takes corners as well as he did against Austria, Turkey can hope for a semi-final spot. And if there's a Dutch guy hanging around here, man, don't throw a cup at him hoping to distract him. It won't work. And he'll just come flex in front of you. After delivering the decisive corner for Demerol's header, he came to calm down the hecklers. Plus, I went to a match, saw the cups. One with all the stadiums is just incredible. Keep them, guys. Don't throw them away. I kept mine. By the way, in the Euro, he became the third player under 20 to score and provide an assist in the same Euro edition after Wayne Rooney and Cristiano Ronaldo. Both achieved this feat in 2004, 20 years ago. News from the French team, friends. Rest assured. Our players can't hit a target, but they can make butt passes. At least Benjamin Pavard can. All right, you really want to be reassured? Know that France is the only team never to have trailed at Euro 2024. A little tip for your predictions, bet on a draw. Because among all the quarterfinalists, the French team has spent the most time with a tied score. 294 minutes to be precise. I don't know why, but it feels like the quarterfinal will be decided on penalties. 